Hello there, this is Gernge with another quick tip video. Today we'll cover my personal Redshift render settings preset, the optimized settings I use on probably 99% of my scenes with minimal tweaks, and then we're going to save that preset for you to easily load into your future scenes. So let's get started. We're going to start in the sampling tab. Now keep in mind, this is a quick tip video, so I'm going to skip past things that I have not changed. And additionally, I'm not going to go into a comprehensive explanation for each of these settings. I'm gonna to try to keep this as fast as we can. So starting off, I uncheck automatic sampling. And of course, that allows us to access the threshold, samples min, and samples max. Now, this value of 0.007 is pretty close to production quality. If you are working on a, a test or a draft render, please feel free to set this as high as say 0.5 or 0.25 if you need things to go a bit quicker. Next, down below in the sampling overrides, we can see that I've got reflection, refraction, and, and all of these values I pre-populate with the value 2048. And I only check these on or off depending on which of these I'm using in my scene. For example, if I've got environment fog, I will turn on the volume, or if I'm using VDBs, perhaps. If I've got some glass, then I'll turn on refraction. Or if there are some reflections or specular highlights, then of course we can use reflection. Now keep in mind, this value 2048 is going to be a bit of a balance compared to the samples max. Now it can be a bit of a trap, thinking if you double the value for one of these overrides, that will magically make that type of sample cleaner. So if you consider doubling one of these values, make sure to experiment with also raising the sample max value, because these two things work as a bit of a balance with one another. The next tab we'll look at is global illumination. My preference for the primary and secondary GI is to use brute force. Now, if you're working in an interior scene, you might be able to experiment with irradiance point cloud, which can sometimes be a little bit more efficient. But again, personal preference, I like brute force, and I use 1024 for my sampling amount. Now, the next section we'll look at is often overlooked. It's the optimizations cutoff thresholds. These values are 10 times higher than the default, which is pretty aggressive, but I've seen the time savings be as high as 30% on some of my renders. While these do introduce a bit of grain, I've never seen neat video denoiser in After Effects not be able to take care of this resulting grain. So I find the trade-off to be pretty acceptable. Next up is our system setting, where we have our legacy and experimental options. I tend to not change too much in here. Just personally, I use the material processing mode on legacy and the texture projections on legacy as well, just because I find those to be a bit buggy still. And then last but not least, we have our bucket rendering. Again, in general, larger buckets will go a little bit faster, but at the expense of memory usage. So if you find yourself in a tricky situation, or you have a graphics card that doesn't have a tremendous amount of video memory, then adjust and experiment with the setting, but by and large, larger will go faster to some degree. So that ought to cover everything as far as my personal presets. The last thing is to save this. Down here, we can make sure that we give this a name of some sort. For me, I just use my initials, and then this is my third iteration of my Redshift presets. So we can right click, save that preset, and then from here, we can right click and load that preset. So thank you for watching this quick tip. I hope it serves you well. And if it does, please consider liking or sharing this video. Thank you.